stress is the cause of disease of 90% of the people. So stress interferes with the immune system. Let's go back thousands of years. And I say, what was the stress? I say, saber-toothed tiger. What happens when the saber-toothed tiger is chasing you? You got to run like hell. <laughs> what organs in your body do you use to deal with stress? I go, arms and legs. If I'm going to need those organs to escape from the tiger, then here's the most important thing. I need to give them energy because without energy, the muscles aren't going to work. What provides energy? I say blood. When I perceive stress, stress hormones function is to provide as much blood to my arms and legs as I can get because I need all of that energy to run away from the tiger. Stress shuts down blood flow to the gut because it's gonna make sure the blood goes preferentially to the arms and legs. The immune system uses tremendous amount of energy. Stress hormones shut off the immune system to conserve energy to run away from the tiger. If you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, do you wanna have consciousness running the show or do you wanna just have reflex reaction carry you away? And the answer is consciousness too slow. Stress hormones shut off that immune system when I squeeze the blood vessels in the forebrain, it pushes the blood to the brain brain where reflexes are going to work. We become less intelligent when we're under stress because consciousness is too slow. Historically, the stress response was to be used for a short period of time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You escape the tiger, no more stress. What about today? They go, oh, got a little problem here. 24-7, 365 stress. The system was not designed for that. And this excess stress is responsible for up to 90% of disease on this planet, not genes. Genes, less than 1%. If you tell somebody genes cause that, then that gives them, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not responsible. The genes did it. I go, no, because if you feel you're not responsible, you shut off your control. Let me give you an example about the difference between growth and protection, because that's what it comes down to. A stimulus provokes us to do something. If it's a good stimulus, you move to it, like love, food, something you want. That's a stimulus, we move to that stimulus. And then I say, but when you move to it, you go open-armed. Why? I want to take it in. If it's love, I, I don't want to close myself down. I want to assimilate it. If it's food, I got to open myself up, take it in. So growth means you go to the stimulus, open, okay? But what if the stimulus is negative? A threat of any kind. I don't go to the stimulus, I go away from the stimulus. Do I go away my arms open? I go, no, you close yourself down because of protection. So what's the difference? Growth, go to a stimulus, arms open. Protection, go away from the stimulus, arms closed. I say, why is it relevant? And here's a simple conclusion. You can't move forwards and backwards at the same time. You can't be open and closed at the same time. So basically it says, if you're in a stress mode, you've shut your system down and growth shut down, you know, that's okay for a very short period. But if it's chronic, you've killed yourself essentially. Look at today's world. Every time you turn on TV, be afraid, be very afraid, go hide in your house. I am getting stress hormones dripping into my system. When I read a paper, go and surf the internet. I go, and what is that doing for you? And I say, it is compromising your health. That's where disease comes from. Cancer is a symptom of you not living in harmony. And therefore, cutting out the cancer, you just get another cancer if you don't change the stress. And it's the ones that realize my life is not in harmony and change that are the ones that have the remission. Cutting out the cancer cells, thinking you've healed everything, is the same as uh, covering up the service engine light on the dashboard when it shows up driving the car. If I cover it up, it's like, oh, hey, everything's running good. The service light's not even on anymore. And I go, you didn't fix anything. You just shut off the symptom. <laughs> and this is, this is where we have to go because every bit of this is a disempowerment to the individual by saying you're frail, you're vulnerable, you're susceptible to all these things. At least one third and up to two thirds of all healing in medicine is due to the placebo effect and not the action of the physician or the drug. That's a fact of science. One third of people 
will heal themselves just because they, they believe whatever they're going to do is going to work. 